Welcome to the Worldwide Center of Mathematics SAT Tips and Techniques video. Um, today we're going to look at rate problems. Um, rates of change, things are changing over time. Um, so the most important formula for you to learn for this is distance equals rate times time. You can think of, I like to remember this by dirt because it kind of looks like that, D-I-R-T. And so this is the relationship that you should really be remembering. You can also think of it as rate is distance over time, or time is distance over rate, but I think that gets, just gets confusing. So we're going to say distance equals rate times time. Now, why are these words in quotes? Um, the answer is because distance isn't always distance, and time isn't always time. Um, we can use this formula to solve a number of different types of problems. Um, if we think of distance in a number of different ways, and time in a number of different ways. Um, so the best way to be figuring out how to solve a rate problem uh, is to begin with rate. Um, rate will always, pretty much always be so something per something else, a quantity per a, another type of quantity. Um, examples that are most obvious are miles per hour or meters per second. because that's a certain distance over a time. In this example, um, distance is miles or meters. So those are units of length. And time is in intervals of hours or seconds. Um, but that's not all that a rate can be. Um, another example for a rate would be uh, miles per gallon for a car. In this example, miles is again the distance, distance. Uh, but in this time, but in this case, time is actually gallons instead of a unit of um, time measurement. So how do you figure out what's the distance and what's the time when neither of the units are intervals of time? Um, in your rate, the time will always be on the bottom. So as you can see in this, uh, in this formula, your distance is going to be unit, uh, say your unit of length, and rate will be that length over a time multiplied by a time. So these will cancel out, and you'll get the lengths balanced on each side. Um, so in looking at your rate, whatever is going to be on the top is your distance, and whatever is on the bottom is your time. Uh, another example of rate would be your salary. Salary is your paid, say, um, seven fifty an hour. So in that case, the distance would be the amount of money you made. And the time would again be you know, hours or minutes or days or however you're paid. Um, another example would be a birth rate. You know, a rate of change of a population. In this case, you're saying a certain number of people are born per year. Um, so your distance would be your population. And time would just be in years or something like that, decades. Um, you can also have something like a rate of flow. Where your distance is going to be a certain volume. Your rate is the volume that passes through uh, like an opening in a certain amount of time. So that's another, again, time. Um, so again, saying distance equals rate times time, that's the easiest way to remember the relationship between these three quantities because of dirt. Um, but distance and time can be all sorts of different things. A lot of them have nothing to do with distance. 
Um, money and volume, we certainly don't think of as distance quantities. Um, but in terms of rate problems, it's the amount that we're trying to get to. And rate describes how fast we get there. Uh, OK, so we're going to do a couple example rate problems, such as you might see on the SAT, to get, help you get a feel for working with rates. OK, so the first one we see, Bob runs at 6 miles per hour for 3.6 miles. How many hours did he run? This is a pretty basic rate problem. We're dealing with time, length, so we know where to go. We remember distance equals rate times time. So our rate is 6 miles per hour, and our distance is 3.6 miles. So to solve for time t, we just need to divide both sides by 6. And 3.6 over 6, that's going to give us 0 0.6. Let's just double check the units to make sure we did that right. Um, 3.6 equals miles. Here we have 6 miles per hour, so that's 6 miles per hour. And our answer should be in hours, t times. And here we see uh, miles equals miles per hour times hours. So hours cancel out, and we get miles on both sides. Things look good. OK, our next question. Two painters can paint 200 square feet of wall in four hours. How long would it take six painters to paint a 450 square foot wall? Assume all painters work at the same pace. I think that's a pretty big assumption, but it makes the calculation easier. Um, so what's our rate here? Our rate is what? OK, so we're not given our rate in this, in this problem. Um, but our rate would be the amount of wall they paint per amount of time. So again, looking at our formula, distance equals rate times time. Here, our distance is 200 square feet of wall. And that's equal to a certain rate that they got this job done um, times four hours. and multiplication. Um, so now we can solve for the rate it takes two painters to paint 200 square feet. And the rate would be 200 over 4, which is 50. And that is square feet per hour. And since that's true for two painters, for six painters, we can assume that they work three times as fast. So. I can say that's a rate of 2. So rate of 6 is going to be 3 times rate of 2 p-bill equals 3 times 50 equals 150. Now I'll go back to our rate formula to find out 450 square feet. So again, our distance is going to be the square feet we need to cover. Now we know our rate. It's 150 square feet per square feet per hour. Times time. Now we can just solve for time by dividing by 150. So 450 divided by 150 is 3. So our answer to that problem is three hours. All right, for the last problem, I'm going to give myself a little bit more room. All right, gas costs $3.60 per gallon. My car gets 24 miles per gallon. I need to travel 12 miles. How much do I spend on gas? Now, looking at this problem, I actually see two rates. There's 360, 
$3.60 per gallon, that's dollars per gallon, and my car, which gets 24 miles per gallon. So there's two different rates here. Um, so we're gonna, I'm gonna record those right here. Here's the rate of money per gallon. And it was 3.6. And there's the rate of miles per gallon. And that's 24. All right, so what do I need to figure out? I need to figure out the total cost. So that sounds like I need to find out an amount of money. And because money's on the top here, that's going to be distance for this rate. So if I have distance equals rate times time, I know the rate is 3.6. These is what I'm looking for. So I need to find out what my time is. Now remember, in this problem, we said it's dollars per gallon. So time is actually the number of gallons. And it looks like I can figure out, figure out the time through this problem, because this is also in terms of um, gallons. So for here, distance is miles. So that's a more traditional form of length. And so our rate is 24, and our time is the number of gallons. Here we're given our distance in the problem. It's 12 miles. So let's just plug that in. So 12 miles equals 24 miles per gallon times the number of gallons. Um, solve for t, and we get 1 half um, gallons. So to go um, 12 miles with 24 miles per gallon, it's going to take a half a gallon. Now we know that we need a half a gallon. All we have to do is plug that into this equation, find out how much a half gallon is going to cost us. Uh, so 3.6 times 1 half, that's like 36, and half of 36 is 18. Uh, remember the decimal point. So that's going to be 1.8, or in dollars, $1.80. So our final example, our final, our final answer to this example is uh, we need to spend $1.80 on gas in order for us to go 12 miles. Uh, so that brings us to the end of our sample questions for this rate problems video. Um, if you have any comments or corrections to make, just comment below and uh, check out more videos from the Worldwide Center of Math on our channel. And good luck on the SAT. So thanks for watching.